Get full episodes of The Damage Report as a podcast on iTunes and Android, and you can watch the live show every weekday on YouTube TV. Today, Bernie Sanders is unveiling another big piece of legislation intending to sort of rein in some of the excesses of American capitalism by chopping down to size in a few small specific ways. One of the biggest corporations in our company, in our country, which is Walmart. This bill would bar big corporations. By the way, it's the Stop Walmart Act. Just to, if you believe that maybe I'm overemphasizing the Walmart part of this, now he's focusing on it. So this bill would bar big corporations from buying their own stock, a move that rewards shareholders unless they pay all employees $15 an hour, provide them seven days of sick leave, and prevent CEO compensation from rising more than 150 times above median employee pay. All three of those are of course good changes. It is interesting that like that the seven days, that is really a low bar that we have not hit here across all companies in America. But the $15 minimum wage, and this is not like just a overall everything, but for the biggest corporations, those who have gotten these big tax cuts that wanna use a bunch of that money not to raise wages, but instead to buy back their shares, which helps those who currently own shares, um, that would be a great change. This is just another instance of Bernie Sanders getting how to take something very complicated and make it very simple. Mm -hmm. uh, he did it, he and Ro Khanna, friend of the show Ro Khanna, mm -hmm. um, they mm -hmm. did it with the Stop Bezos Act, now they're doing the Stop Walmart Act. What was that? They originally targeted a well-known corporation and then proved to you that they're doing something really bad. Yeah. And they are essentially saying this is a practice done. It's not like let's generically improve uh, the, the status of workers. It's like here's something we can do. We have been fighting for 15. That's something easy to wrap your mind around. And bu stock buybacks. This is mm -hmm. essentially, the, and, and it's an until you do X, you can no longer do Y. Previous with the Stop Bezos Act, it was until you pay a fair wage, you cannot do uh, take federal assistance from the mm -hmm. government in order to balance out what you're not paying your workers. In this way, it's saying until you get $15 an hour, you can't uh, you know, leech off you know, in a different way. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and some of these things, just putting them out there as potential changes, I think for a lot of people who don't know the current state of things here, will be educational. Like. So he wants to to limit it to rising more than 100 CEO pay rising more than 150 times above median employee pay. Right now, it's far worse than that. But I wonder, like, if you asked a regular American, would they know that CEOs aren't just rich? They don't just make a lot of money. They make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, if not thousands of times, um, what the median employees actually make. And this is median. This is yes. not like the average. This is the person, like which is already being brought up by executives and things like well, that. Well, those yeah. are total number of people. So mm -hmm. there are just as many people making less than this person mm -hmm. as there are making more than this person. And so uh, when it comes down to that, they're essentially saying, and, and that's something else you could say, like the the person in the middle. If the CEO is making 150 times more than the person in the middle, that's mm -hmm. not okay, and that's not going to stand. Yeah. Yeah, and so why is he focusing on Walmart here? Well, he points out that the Walton family is the richest in America with an estimated net worth of about $180 billion. That family owns about 50% of Walmart stock. And uh, while the starting wage for Walmart employees is $11 an hour, that translates into a little more than $19,000 a year, they are obviously making a gigantic amount of money. And what's interesting is that this bill sets up two different paths that you can go on. You can have the current system, where we do tax cuts like they did at the beginning of this year. You give tons of money to these corporations, you tell people they will use this money to pay their workers more. But if you know anything about the way that the economy works, like that there are incentives that might lead you to pay people more, but not it's not having more money. You're not just like, well, I got a bunch of cash, I guess I'll give it to my workers or you know, uh, everything else being equal, I guess I'll just hire more people. It's not like there's more demand for the products. I just feel like hiring more people. That's not how any of this actually works. And right now, if they get that money, they're gonna spend it on something, and it generally is buying back stock. That's what happened you know, about 15 years ago when we had the, uh, the earlier round of these tax cuts. That's what's happening now in the wake of Trump's tax cuts. To totally unrestrained, we're gonna put no requirements whatsoever, no limitations on how you spend that money. Instead, you have the Bernie plan, which is you can still do that. You can still buy back your stock. You just also have to do right by your employees and set up a situation that does not create like this new gilded age in America. And you'll still make tons of money. And I think for regular working people that see that, they think, 
this is really the best of both worlds. It still benefits the corporation and the CEO, but along the way, they're not trampling over the rights of all the rest of us. Yeah, and for those in the Trump administration who's saying that workers' wages are going up, it finally hit 3%, which is mm -hmm. the uh, basically how much it costs, the, the cost of living adjustment. So um, the consumer price index. So ev finally, you're getting a raise at the rate at which products you have to buy are increasing in price. So yeah. now, by your wages raising at three, rising at 3%, you are not taking a pay cut, which mm -hmm. means every year before this, when wages weren't raising at the price of milk, cheese, and eggs, mm -hmm. you were getting a pay cut. Yeah. So they're, they've been bragging about how now you are not getting a pay cut. Mm -hmm. And this it's, is saying we need to give you the raise you, you deserve and the back pay for every year you are essentially getting a pay cut. Mm -hmm. And and after they do that, then they can go back to the yeah. cookie jar. And everyone can benefit. Yeah. Yeah, it's like getting a raise. The analogy I think of is like, like imagine if you're floating in the open ocean and your head is barely above like the water. Like imagine how great it would be if you could be lifted up out of that by pouring more water into the ocean. That yeah. doesn't actually improve your situation. Um, bad analogy. Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.